today on Hoochos, we dig a dam. So this video is about 10 months in the making, just under. The dam was commenced on the 2nd of June 2019 and completed the next day. It took around 12 hours all up to complete for a cost of $1,000. All credit for this dam goes to Dez. Dez is a bloke that lives up the road. Some artists use a brush. Dez uses his digger. At the same time that he was sculpting our dam, he also reformed our driveway and created a scoop drain that funnels all of the water from the top of our property into our dam. After he shaped our driveway, we got some road base in and covered it, which he then leveled out and gave us a fantastic driving surface. Before that, in the corner where the pipe runs under the driveway, we had a boggy quagmire that covered our cars in mud every time it rained. The whole top of the property now drains down into where the dam was being constructed. To construct the dam, Des dug into the what looked like clay, removed the topsoil, whatever there was there, and pushed it to one side. He then dug down until he could find watertight clay. So he found the clay that will hold the water and piled it to one side, removed all of the other material, pushing it out, and then built the dam wall. As he was building the dam wall, he was compacting it using his large digger, running it over the top multiple times. And then with the leftover clay, he lined the walls to make a water seal. He's given us an overflow point that doesn't run onto anyone else's property. There's no one below us before the creek. It runs out over the top of well-established grass, so there's no erosion. And after just under 10 months, this is what it looks like. It's finally full. We had a very, very long dry spell over winter. And this is actually the result of about probably a month and a half's worth of rain right through January and February. So we're stoked. Uh, we've been looking at an empty dam for so long uh, that it's unreal to look at a full one. And just even in the last month and a half, we've noticed that the, the frog song and the wildlife have just, you know, exploded. But today, I'm going to run you through the different types of land care natives that I'm going to put in along the dam wall to stabilize it and hopefully give the frogs some habitat. The benefit of grasses is in Australia, we get a lot of cane toads. Now, they're an introduced species and they wreak havoc on our natural fauna. Cane toads hop, they don't jump which makes native grasses the ideal surrounding for a body of water because if they can't get into the water to breed, they can't breed. And I got all of these grasses from the local land care nursery. Land care is a great place to get all your natives. They come in cheap. $2.50 tube stocks and they come in more expensive established plants as well and they're all across Queensland and Australia so visit your local land care nursery and grab yourself some tube stocks so one of the first plants we'll be adding to our dam wall these ones will go on the outside of the dam wall um, they're Artanema fimbriatum if I'm saying that correctly, uh, but the common name is koala bells. Um, they're named for these purple flowers that they've got. And as you can see, by the little bees actually that are already around us, um, they're fantastic um, native bee attractants. These ones are gonna go in, so all of the native flora have bees around. so simple we just need bees
This next one is the Juncus usitatus, uh, or the Australian common rush. These are fantastic for stabilization of banks and for native birds and frogs. So these ones will go in along the water's edge, along the internal of the bank wall. Now, I hope I'm saying this right. The common name's a lot easier. Alpinia cerulea. This is a ginger that's actually native to uh, Australia and, if I'm not mistaken, some parts of Oceanic Asia. It's a perennial herb, and uh, this one likes wet environments, uh, usually found in rainforests. So this one will be planted at the top of the internal of the dam wall. Um, and I might plant a, one on the external of the dam wall as well, just to see what it likes best. So this next one is the Lomanda Hystrix. It's the Creek Mat Rush, and uh, it's a native the grass to Australia. It's also good for local frogs and birds. And uh, I've got two more of these that I've already laid out, but uh, the camera wasn't rolling, so. There it is. I think tests your pronunciation like scientific names. This next one is Dianella brevipe dunculata. I hope I got that right. <laughs> now the common name for these is the blue flax lily. And it's an Australian native grass again, uh, which is also good for frogs and birds. Love those frogs and birds. Don't you eat that. You're good for the froggies, for the flokies. So this is Ostromotus deleucus, or the medium berry. Uh, it has mauve berries. It's an edible native, just like the native ginger. Um, and this one will go up on top of the dam wall. So the lovely lady at the land care nursery she enlightened me as to how to tell the difference between a frog tadpole and a cane toad tadpole. Now, frog tadpoles, when you take them out of the water and roll them over, will have a clear belly. And a cane toad tadpole isn't see-through, it will have a black belly. Now, I'm not going to go through and selectively take out every single cane toad tadpole, but it's a good indicator of what kind of amphibians are breeding in your dam. I plan on adding fish into the dam in the near future, native fish, that will control the tadpole population. And a major benefit of fish is they also control mosquito populations, as do frogs and tadpoles. So what I'm trying to do with the native plants is to give them a good habitat to hide in from predators and also to try and minimize the toad's interaction with the water by giving it some kind of barrier uh, between the water and the water's edge. So here we have another native. Um, this one we got from a local native nursery and uh, it's an Illawarra flame tree, isn't it? And I'm pretty sure these are native alocasias, which are under canopy plant that like moist conditions, although this might be a little bit too moist, to be honest. <laughs> what do you reckon? Oh. <laughs> so that's enough talking about planting natives. I guess we better dig in. Might need a shovel. Well, that's it. They're all planted. I hope that they all survive. Um, I've planted them all directly into the ground, so uh, I don't expect them all to thrive, but hopefully most of them will take off and uh, we'll have some nice native habitat for the frogs and the birds and the bees. 
the birds and the bees. I'll provide links in the descriptions to all the native plants that I've used today. And uh, they can all be found at your local land care nursery if you live in Australia. Alrighty. I'll let you know how the dam goes as we progress forward. Like and subscribe for more updates. And I'll see you next time on Who Chose.